I'm also in testing this whole little Landworks Moultrie Mafia situation out at the smallest level that you can pretty much be in. And what I'm figuring out is that there's two ways to do the landscape industry, right? There's two ways to do it. I'm going to talk about the progression of landscaping. So the progression, the way it starts is, one, I'm in a job. Two, I'm in high school. Those are the two options, right? So you're like in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and you're like, hey, I'm, I'm going to get out of this job. This job sucks. I'm going to build my own company. And you look at landscaping. You look at the landscape industry, and you go, you know what? I can make it happen. Low cost entry somewhat. And I can make it happen. You know what I mean? I can do it. One, you're in high school, and you're like, eh, no place around here is going to hire me. How do I get into this thing? And then you look at landscaping and you're like, oh, dude, I could totally get into landscaping. There's good money in it. I can rock it, right? What's up, Doug? Good to see you. So you get into the industry. And when you realize, if you look at the industry on a spreadsheet, the, the variables are insane. Like, the variables are absolutely, absolutely insane. However, you're in the game. And when you get into the game, you start building up a route. You start building up a mowing route. So when you start building up your mowing route, you start building up clients. And once you start getting clients, they start asking you for landscape jobs, for tree jobs, for this or that. And you say no or yeah, maybe, right? And then what happens is, uh, so like what happens is you start taking those jobs. And then you, when you take those jobs, you realize, wait a second, I just made more money in a day than I did a whole week mowing. Why do I mow? The reason that you mow is because it gives you consistency and you're scared to leave that consistency. And then once you have that consistency, you find out, hey, it's good. It keeps the cash flows good, but I need some employees. Well, now that you have the employees, now you have the consistency. Now that you have the, con the consistency to keep the employees. So now you are mowing to keep your employees. Why do you need your employees? Because on Fridays and Saturdays or whatever your schedule is, you're making the cheddar on the landscape jobs, right? Yes, you are, and you know this. And then once you're making that cheddar, you go, okay, well, I need to keep these employees around because the employees are what's making kind of the cheddar when we bust out these landscaping because landscaping is way better always all the time. Yes, there's two anarchy flags, okay, because you make sure from any angle that people know. We don't play games at this pole barn. There's no games here, okay? It's just straight up loaded AKs. That's all we do here. All right, so anyway... So you get in this thing, and you're like, okay, now I'm, doing, I'm killing it with landscaping. But if you can replace your laborers, like TW gets, he gets, he knows where I'm going. If you can replace them with a machine, then you need less laborers, okay? Because if you're doing mulching, and you're doing some, like, final grade, and you're doing some irrigation work, you still need some hands, you know what I mean? You still need human hands. The problem is that human hands, they kind of suck, okay? They freaking suck. Anarchy flag on R1? Most likely. I mean, I think that'd be a, R1's going to be the rawest truck on Instagram that everyone's going to copy. It's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be great. But here's the thing is that when you do the final product, the final, final product, I don't care if you're doing electrical, you're doing painting, you're doing the final product, the mulch on the landscape, you need human hands. That's just what it is. Human hands cost 10 to $15 an hour. They back talk you. They drink. They do lots of things. Sometimes in my case, one of them actually hit me on the side of the head. I did wreck that kid, though. I will tell you that straight up. The kid freaking hit me. kid was on the ground. Please show up. And they're like, do you want to put a report on him? I was like, nah, it's all cool. I think he's not going to do it again. But here's the situation is that is going, that's inevitably going to be how it works. 